came out and it was affordable, you know, within our range. And I believe we were the first TV show to shoot on it because uh, we started shooting right when they came out. So, you know, what was it about it between your tests and talking with Canon that, you know, made you trust that transition into a brand new camera? It had a Super 35 sensor, which is bigger than the four thirds that we were shooting on. That was awesome. Everything looks so much more cinematic, you know. Um, uh, it had some things about it that were a little bit of a shortfall, like the 8-bit color space. Um, it didn't do high speed at 1080, which was kind of a bummer. Um, but overall, we thought it would be a great camera for us because you can break it down super tiny. The size of the camera would just enable us to do so much more with it. You know, we could put it in various forms and just gave us a big range. You know, all of a sudden we can mount it to bicycles. And, you know, in Workaholics, we do all kinds of crazy stunts and things like that. Like we did an episode where we shot it like the movie uh, Crank and we just had the body with an EF lens, a really deep stop on it, and all the accessories in a backpack, and our operators could be on rollerblades and just go like this everywhere with this camera. And it was really cool. It was a really cool, fresh style we could do for one episode. Also, the low light on the C300, the low light situation is pretty awesome and was a game changer, I think, for the industry. How great was it, you know, working with that? Yeah, I mean, the, the low light capabilities of the C300 was an insane jump up for us because all of a sudden we went from shooting at 320 ISO to native 850. Uh, so, you know, night shoots was a lot more attainable for us because we didn't need the big lights that we needed before. We do it with a lot less um, and the budget can be pretty tight on Workaholics, so, you know, it's not a huge budget show. You know, I've gone up to 3200 ISO for a lot of our night stuff, and it looks strong. And that was, that has saved me on multiple occasions, being able to do that with our capabilities. So this season you guys are moving on to a new camera. Um, tell me about that. We're gonna shoot the C300 Mark II this time, uh, which is conveniently coming out right at the beginning of our season. Once again, we might be the first TV show again to use it. It's a great camera. Canon let us test one. We love it. Um, you know, the upgrades are pretty much everything we wanted out of the C300, you know. Um, gives us 4K capability, high speed. The dynamic range is even better this time, which I love, love, love. Uh, bigger color space. So we're going into it excited and we can, we can take that camera and adapt the camera rigs and gear that we already have and it's basically almost a seamless flow. The workflow in post is a little bit different uh, so we'll have to adjust to that but that's not a big thing. Bam cam! Go! 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 I'm too... oh. Dig in deep and find yourself because there is an inner hero laid within your heart. Damn! The evolution of technology in my time in the film industry or you know when we started the show versus now or you know just just the last five to ten years is incredible the ability for an indie filmmaker to get gear that showcases um, your product is so easy and attainable now you know I mean before we started out with shooting on a high eight little handy cam or something and you know then we upgraded to a DVX which was still very primitive but mind-blowing to us and now you have a camera like the C300 or C100 or FS7 or you know all these all these cameras that are so affordable and easy to attain and give you such an amazing image incredible quality to your to your project I mean what an exciting time you know someday we'll be shooting on 8k and Oh, what fun it'll be but you have no way of making that happen right now um, you know even even 4k is a is is a lofty goal still you know and and a lot of I'd probably say most people are watching TV at 720 still I don't get too caught up in technical specs of cameras um, to me it all comes down to what image I like the best and I don't care if this camera does 4K in this color space or whatever. Um, 
if I like the image of this other camera at 1080, I'm gonna choose that one because just because of the way it makes everything look. I mean, it's it's all it's all preference, but I, I think people get too lost in the in the technical specs debate, and they lose sight of the end result, which is what looks the best and what serves your story correctly. You know, when you're when you're starting a project, you really are starting at the finish line because you're seeing how you're ending up with the project and how it's being delivered to the viewers and work back from there. Rather than say, I'm gonna get the, you know, we're gonna shoot at 6K and, you know, the best color space and we're gonna go raw and we're gonna have an entire vault room of hard drives full of footage <laughs> that's gonna end up on a, on a six inch uh, web screen like this or on somebody's iPhone. You know, and it's high goals, and that's great. But you can be realistic and maybe put that money towards your production value instead in other ways. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the accessibility to all these great cameras, you know, and then and then things like ShareGrid making it so much easier for an indie filmmaker to access that gear without having to go through a rental house sharing and borrowing from other local filmmakers who are maybe in your same position. Trading, making connections with your local community is big, you know? I mean, you, you never know when you're gonna run into those people later on down the road, it's a, it's a small world. To be able to have such a, a broad base of, you know, an incredible variety of gear and working professionals to touch base with um, is such an asset. <laughs>